Hey guys, the Unsmooth Criminal here, and I'm here with a new what if. This is going to be a special what if, but I have to do some plugs first. The normal checklist. If you like my content, subscribe. If you really like my content and want to keep up to date, hit that bell icon and click all. And if you really like this video, please consider leaving a like. And this is going to be a what if that you're going to need some backstory and lore. So if you want some lore of the Elder Scrolls universe, you should go to Fudge Muppet and consider subscribing to them because they are really good at everything's lore based for every game they've played. And I have listened to all their lore videos and it's made sense to me. Don't know if it'll make sense to you, but if you want to know what happened to the Snow Elves, which in this, you are going to be the main character, the person listening. And I'm going to take you on a journey through the Elder Scrolls universe. And I'm probably going to, not going to write this, but it's going to be an audio for, version. And it's going to be called, What If You Were Tainted? So this story is about you and I'm taking you on this journey of your explorations and you as the player and, and if you guys want to can say what weapons from animes or abilities from animes that you want in here and I can see what I can do. But you were... Yeah, this is going to be about you and your journeys. And I've said that multiple times, but it's true. You're a snow elf. You're a female snow elf, and your name is Iska. And your last name has been lost to time. But you are a royal snow elf that was not captured by the Dunmer. Not Dunmer. Uh, Dwemer. And not enslaved by the Dwemer. And and your cousins were... And you're waking up at a time where your cousins and families were transformed into Falmer. But let's go back to where it all started. Before you were enslaved. Before your people were enslaved. So you're sitting in a throne room, hearing explosions all around you, and you ask your father, Father, what's going on outside? And he says, we're under attack, and I need you to go down through the escape, and I shall hold them off. And he so tells your mother to take you down, and you're three, not three, uh, you're seven, eight. And your mother picks you up and carries you down the large flight of steps and down the secret passage that is immediately closed behind you and your father seals it off with a earth spell. And your father was renowned for his earth, ice, and fire magic. And you've picked up on your mother's healing or your mother's alteration, destruction, illusion. You're, you picked up on all the magic schools really easily, including enchantment. Your father was known for destruction and alteration. Your mother was known for the rest of them. But they knew nothing, little to nothing, about enchantment. And you picked up really easily on those, and was a child prodigy and now that you're leaving your home you're worried that everything's going to go bad and so you're put in a boat with your mother and a bodyguard of sorts and put in civilian clothes and he starts trying to row you out of the 
underground river area. And you get out of the cave and there's a basically a firing squad waiting for you and they say where's the princess and the and you guys say we don't know we're escapees from the castle and you're acting you're not acting you're very scared so you cling to your mother and they say okay you may go but any wrong move and you're to be executed at once and that order has been passed down the chain to every soldier in this army that's attacking you and so you keep rowing and then one of the soldiers says okay now come to the side of the river and we need to search you guys and so you guys go to the side of the river and your mother hides her pendant well but you forgetting that you had your pendant on to signify you're a royal they spot it and immediately grab you by the neck and throw you to the shore and what you don't know or what you didn't know at the time was that the man that threw you is part werewolf and he scratched you just slightly and cursed you with lycanthropy. Lycan lycanthrope. Cursed you to be a lycanthrope. And this army is filled, w filled with the companions and just random Nords and some Dwemer and some Bosmer and so on so you get thrown and you hit your head and pass out and what's going on around you is your mother immediately starts using her alteration and some destruction to encase everybody around you in ice and she kisses your forehead saying i'm sorry and then seals you in ice And with your snow elf blood, you're able to easily survive the freezing cold, but you still feel it. And there was a enchantment placed on you by your mother, not an enchantment, a spell placed on you by your mother, to where time passes and you grow, and you learn everything you were just meant to learn. And when you finally awake, you know what the world is like and how to survive. So, you slowly sink because the ice is heavy and you slowly sink to the bottom of the river and you drift away. And the mages that were in the area saw that you sunk into the water and didn't pop back up so they didn't want or didn't look for you any more than that and your mother and the guard were taken prisoner and they say they are put into captivity by the Dunmer and the companions go on their merry way to the Skyforge they find the Skyforge and start using it And now that a few hundred years have passed, your eyes finally open and you resume living. And you are on the bank of a random shore that you don't recognize. And you look around and you see the ruins of what looks like a castle. And then you look around even more and you see what looks like a random elf, random myrrh. And you ask in snow elfish, 
if he can say where they are. And the elf looks at her and looks confused, and she starts speaking in other languages, seeing which one that he can understand. And he then gets to Imperial, and she then gets to Imperial, and she's very... She's very... You're, you're very weak at the imperial language and you're stuttering and messing up on a few words and he finally understands you and he responds in perfect imperial and says that you are in Skyrim and you were in the water and he fished you out and you ask where's Skyrim and he looks at you confused and says that you're on the continent of Skyrim, or you're on the continent of Tamriel, and you're in Skyrim, and you say, I still don't know where Skyrim is. I know where Tamriel is. I want to go back to my home, and he asks, where is your home? And she says, it's... I don't really know... A, uh, a um, castle name, so I'm just going to say, you said the castle name, and he looks at you confused, and he says, that's been a ruin for over 200 years, and no one has lived there in over 300 years, and you say, but I was just there, and you look at yourself and see that you have no clothes on, it's middle of winter, and you're hands look like claws and you start looking at yourself even more and you see that you have fully matured into adulthood and that you're no longer the seven-year-old child that you were you're now a full-grown adult and fully matured and you ask the man if he has any spare clothes that he could spare part with so you can cover up and he says sure he hands you a spare set of clothes and you ask where is the closest town so I can get settled in or so I can understand what's going on and he says the closest town is the town of Helgen I know the town of Helgen's not actually on the coast I'm just saying it's the town of Helgen and yeah, you know what? It's on. It's close to the. Um, it's close to a riverbank. So he says the closest town is the town of Helgen, and it's up there. And he points up to the, the place, and you start walking up, and you see the gates of Helgen, and the guards ask you, "What are you doing?" And you say that you're. You don't know just lost and he says okay I will let you in and he lets you in and you're in one of the guard towers asking questions about the surrounding area and and then you accidentally let it slip that you're a snow elf and you were attacked when you were seven and this guard looks at you like you're crazy because he's never heard of a snow elf and then and then he says that, well, you're currently in the town of Helgen, well, Fortress of Helgen, and you're somewhat disturbing a execution of prisoners, and you go, okay, can I watch and understand what their crimes are? And this guard, who's nice, says, sure, and... You walk out and you're in uh, casual civilian clothes and you watch this and you've seen many executions before and the general says for the murder of the high king Talius uh, Talius for the murder of the high king you are you're here sentenced to death and that's when Alduin comes flying from the mountain and shouts and 
you understanding dragon tongue, because there was dragons that back then, you start speaking dragon instinctively. And Alduin starts responding to you, and you have a conversation. You say, what are you doing here, and who are you? And he says, I'm Alduin, the world eater. Oh, it's your clock. Yay! He says, I'm Alduin, the world eater, and I'm here to kill the dragonborn. And her eyes light up, saying, there hasn't been... I thought there hasn't been a dragonborn since before I was born. And Alduin says yes, and the Dragonborn's abilities shall awaken this year. But I can't sense who the Dragonborn is until their abilities awaken. I just know that they'll be here today. And you go, okay, and you stop talking in Dragon Tongue, and the guard that was standing next to you, you stop the shouts because you could understand Dragon. You stop the shouts with your mere presence, and Alduin didn't dare attack you because you're a snow elf royal and you're the last of your kind. So he was taking pity upon the mortal races of Tamriel, and he then asks, "Who the who is thy? What is thy name?" and you speak your name in dragon and while you're speaking ja dragon all these memories flow back to you of shouts words of power and all that and Alduin then leaves and starts to massacre everybody around you and you are trying to save this guard because he was nice to you and helped you so you basically Put him on your back, and since you're two times stronger than a normal, uh, Bosmer, Dwemer, Dwemer, Bosmer, Thalmer, since you're stronger than all the races, two times stronger than all the races normally, you start running with him on your back, and you get to the top of the guard's tower, and you have to jump off onto the inn because there was a fire, and you are easily weakened by fire magic and you keep running and you finally get into Helgen Keep and and the they are currently trying to fight off a storm cloak invasion and you're you currently have a Helgen guard on you and then one of the storm cloaks sees the Helgen guard and sees you and thinks that you're just a normal civilian siding with the Imperials, and so they start attacking you, and you grab the great sword that they just used out of midair and rip it out of their hand, and then easily one-hand the great sword and slice them in half. Because you're a fully matured snow elf. Snow elves, when they're fully matured, are stupid strong. That's why. You slice them in half and continue running with the great sword in one hand. And when you get out to the cave with the spiders, you put the guard down and say that I will check the area ahead and then I'll come and get you when it's clear. And you, with your heightened senses from your werewolf blood, start smelling the smell of wet animal and walk out there and smell a bear and or smell and slight and slightly see a bear and immediately go to work fighting it And you kill the bear and walk outside of the a cave and see light and walk back in, call the guard over and uh, what's his name from the main game?
I don't remember his name. But you call the guard over, he comes running and asks, So, why were you in Helgen? And you say, Apparently I was fished up out of the sea, and I don't remember... I don't remember a lot about my past. I just know that I'm highly adept in magic and that, I w that I'm a snow elf and I can speak any language I want and I know dragon tongue. And he asks, was that really a dragon? Do you say yes? Apparently the end of the world is here and everybody needs to get ready to fight Alluin. And this guard looks at you and says, the end of the world. And you go, yes. And, you go, and he goes, So the legends are true. The dragons are coming back. And you say the prophecy that was not supposed to start for many, many years from when I was born is apparently coming true now that I've woken up. And... You ask, is the great beard still on, or still in High Hrothgar? And he says, yes, the great beards are still at High Hrothgar. We don't know if they are alive, though, because we never see them. And she goes, okay, I will walk up there. In a few, in a few days, I just need to get some supplies and food to make the trek and. He, the guard says, I can help you with that. Just, you have to come to Riverwood with me and I can have my uncle, who's a blacksmith there, uh, give you some supplies and probably teach you some forging. And if you need some metals, he could probably give you some. And you say, sure, I will take you up on that offer. So you get to the, you get to Riverwood and you walk to the blacksmith and respectfully ask for some help and he sees his uh, nephew and asks what the what is this and you explain how what happened at Helga and, and he says sure he brings out a chest and it has some supplies in it and you currently you pick up all these supplies and. With your alteration magic, you open up a portal and put stuff in there and close it and say, thank you. And can I use your forge if I need to? And he says, sure. But it's really hard to use. Are you sure you can use it? And she goes, I can forge. Just I haven't forged in over 300 years. So hopefully I still remember what I have when I could forge. And both of them look at her like she's crazy, and she goes, Oh, crap, I said it. And she explains her race and what she's done with her past and what happened to her and her own entire story. And this is currently while they're sitting in the house. And they say, sure. And so she goes out and starts forging. And an hour later... No, not an hour later. Um, two to three days later, she has armor that looks like this. And then she says, okay, I'm off and I'll visit you guys after I meet with the Greybeards to talk to them. And so she walks to High Harathgar and since the Greybeards don't answer to just anybody, she shouts at the door. Foos. And the door slowly opens and one of the graybeards walks out and says, Who it's that who is thou? And you introduce yourself and say that I've learned from the original Greybeard and I wish to learn of this world. And he looks at you and says What is thou? Or what what or who are you and what are you? And you say, I'm a snow elf. And the graybeard's eyes widen slightly in 
surprised because they have tomes and scrolls of the Wood Elves that the Wood Elves were the original people to learn of the Dragon Tongue and learn how to harness the Dragon Tongue. But they were more of a passive race, so they never fought. But when they did fight, they were pretty much unstoppable if they were at their max capacity. And he welcomes her in, and he says, Is there anything that you would like to talk about? And she asks for the summary of what's going on in the world so far. And the Greybeards say that there is a, there's currently a alliance, not alliance, a uh, civil war in Tamriel, and the Thalmer and the Bosmer, not Thalmer and Bosmer, and Imperials and uh, Nords are all having a conflict for the right to rule over Tamriel, and she goes. It, it's seriously the Thalmer, Imperials, and Nords, again. And he goes, I think so, why? And she goes, 300 years ago there was a war, and it was the Nords, Thalmer, Bosmer, and Imperials that attacked us. And he looks at her and says, oh, okay, I understand. And they say, we have kept out of the war for the entire time and been seeing this country fall apart. You know, I'm going to reclaim my land and my power. And I will stop this dumb war from continuing any further. And he says, okay, but you cannot use the way of the voice. And she goes, I will use the way of the voice if I need to. I'm still stronger. And then she walks it to the back of the area and uses clear skies. One of the shouts that you learn and walks up to Parthenax and bows and greets him in the dragon tongue. And they start having a conversation. Normally, Parthenax is left alone at the top of the mountain. But since she can use clear skies, she's easily able to get up there. And Parthenax, remembering the war 300 years ago, says that all the snow elves have turned into uh, Falmer. Falmer? Yeah, I think it's Falmer. And that they are forever scarred and left into the depths of darkness and you are the last true-blooded Falmer or not Falmer, uh, Snow Elf alive. So you walk down the mountain and continue to clear the skies and when you get back and they say, how, why, what are you even doing? And she says, I was talking to an old friend that I knew was still here. And they get confused, but then they remember that she's 300 years old. That you're 300 years old. And... They go, okay, we'll help you in any endeavor you need as long as we don't have to fight or cause any conflict because we're still pacifist people. And she goes, yeah, and that worked for my people, how? And they look at her and say, um, we're pacifists. And she then goes, yeah, and you're going to be enslaved just like my people were because they were too lazy and too peace-loving to actually fight for what we needed. And she starts getting angry. And she starts to gain fangs. And her eyes go slit. Or you, start to gain, you, you start to gain fangs. In her, and your eyes go slit. And they didn't see this. But you're 
ready to rip their heads off. So you leave and while you're heading down the mountain of or the 10,000 steps, you run into a troll and you kill the troll and then all of a sudden your mouth starts watering. And it's night and you use clear skies because it's about to rain. And you see the full moon and then you black out. And you wake up at the bottom of the steps in a cave and without any armor on. And you look around, confused. Then you look at yourself and you see many sword wounds, knife wounds, arrow wounds, and you even still have an arrow in your left shoulder. So you pull the arrow out and you see the wound close up immediately and it only leave a scar. And you walk out of the cave and see that you're in the middle of nowhere. And you look around and see that, or notice that your eyesight is ten times better than it was. And your scent is, your sense of smell and, and your strength is twice as good as it was originally. When you woke up. And you feel this overwhelming urge to just run and kill. But you make your way to the Dwemer ruins of Markarth and in search of your brethren to see if the room to see if Parthenax was telling the truth. And you run into a vigil of Stendar and walk into the haunted house. And you're still super strong. So the vigil is sees that you're under the control of the Daedric Lord. Or thinks that you're under the control of the Daedric Lord. And he starts attacking you out of nowhere. And people with the Daedric Blessings show a affliction to holy magic. But it's perceived as holy magic and you showed an affliction to holy magic and he starts attacking you completely and starts to try to beat you up and then all of a sudden you just grab the mace out of his hand and start ripping him to shreds and then out of instinct and you couldn't control this you plunge your hand into his chest and pull out his heart then eat his heart and you're and then you notice and it you're confused about this and the daedric lord who was close to you comes to you in a form and shows his shows himself and says that you should must get a priest and a priest from another Daedric Lord and say to bring them here. And you bring this priest to this temple and shrine and you beat him up with a rusty mace. You beat him all bloodied and broken and then all of a sudden his wounds start to heal. And then you beat him up bloodied and broken again. And then... After a few beat beatings he takes, he switches to the uh, faith of this Daedric Prince and starts worshipping this Daedric Prince. And you get, and the Daedric Lord says you can keep the mace. And he says you now are the champion of Molech Baal. And you say, I don't want to be the champion. You can have your st stupid mace and he just leaves and you feel power that you don't you didn't want but you like it and so you put the mace away in your portal and walk to the ruins and ask why you can't see this part of the ruins and he says 
the Hall of the Dead is off limits and you start using your your charisma and your royal charisma that you've learned to use to get the go ahead to walk in and this woman you know she's there but you can't see her so all of a sudden you hear this voice from all around telling you telling you that you've eaten flesh of a living creature and you've liked it and that you like eating corpses and you start you actually start to have a watery mouth because you remember the flavor of the vigil of Stendar's heart and you like it and all of a sudden this woman appears behind you and says I need your help to clear out a dungeon if you help me clear out the dungeon, I can help you to unleash your true sis true feeling sister and you go sure, you clear out the dungeon and you get sent on a quest by the Daedric Lord to fetch a sacrifice. And you fetch the first thing that comes to your mind of that priest that said you couldn't enter the Hall of Dead because he made you a little mad so you want revenge so you use your charisma again to to, to persuade him to follow you and he follows you to the banquet and you are tasked to by the Daedric Lord to eat a part of the body so you plunge your hand into the heart of into the chest and eat the heart and all of a sudden a ring appears on your finger that you didn't want and you feel invigorated by it while eating the heart and you see that the ring has an enchantment on it via the daedric lord and then you go to the you finally get into the ruins and start looking around and you find that the rumors were true that your brethren have transformed into creatures and these creatures just attack anything that doesn't look like them or the beetles ever again they just always attack and you're saddened by this, so you leave and you swear vengeance on the Dwemer and say if you ever meet a Dwemer, you're going to rip their head off and completely annihilate the family of that Dwemer. But little do you know, there's no more Dwemer alive. So you leave and you wander the area and you finally get to a city called Whiterun because you wandered the way all the way around on a strange path it's been a few months and you walk into the city of Whiterun and the guard says halt you can't enter with dragons on the loose and you say i I've been trying to find this place. I've been sent by you, uh, Riverwood to give a message to the Jarl to request aid. And he goes, okay, you may enter. But any funny stuff and I'll kick you out. And while you're walking through town, you hear two guards talking. And one mentions his past and says, I used to be an adventurer like you and like you were until I took an arrow to the knee. And he goes, huh, that's not that bad. I took a fireball to the gut. And they start com they start matching stories and which one's worse. And you're still walking and you finally get to the Jarl and the 
chief guard is walking towards you and asks, what are you doing here? And you say, I'm here on, I was been looking for White Run and I'm here to talk to the Jarl about sending reinforcements to Riverwood. And then you get, then you get to the Jarl, tell him about Riverwood and they request for aid. And he sends Riverwood some troops to defend. And the Jarl says, now, if you were willing to help, we have a question. And you say, sure, what is it? And he says, we need help clearing a dungeon because I can't spare any guards and we need the dragon tablet for um, the dungeon and we need help getting it. All the, com the companions are just doing side jobs while they won't touch the government work and we just need someone to do it. And you go, sure, I'll do it. I'll get there as fast as possible. And the next thing, thing you know, you're clearing a dungeon that's full of bandits. And you're starting to get hungry because you see these dead bodies with blood all over. And you start eating. And and then you find the, the Draugr. And you easily clear them. And you keep going through the dungeon. And then you get to the word wall and it's a word that you've not heard before and you walk up next to the word wall wondering what the word is and all of a sudden you feel the knowledge of the word go coursing into you but you can't seem to understand it yet and then this coffin bursts open and this creature walks out and the Axe is chilled and he starts shouting words of power that freeze everything around you. And since you're a snow elf, you are naturally resistant to it. And he pretty much able to do nothing to you besides the sharp end of the blade. And you catch the blade and start hitting him with it and you're like oh this would be good fuel for enchantment and you put it in your storage and you look at the ring and you're like I want to take this off but I can't and then you look at it even closer and you notice that it's made out of bone And you say, this is creepy, I better hide it. And so you put on your gloves, and those are what the gloves look like, and you hide them. You hide the ring, and you go back with the dragon tablet and speak with Fodding God again to hand in the dragon tablet, and Fodding God says that there's been reports of a dragon sighting on the outskirts of town. And you walk up to a, uh, a guard runs in and says that there's a dragon sighting at the Western Watchtower. And before you're even told to, you run out to the Western Watch Watchtower and start, start by clearing the skies and since only the three heroes of the past know the shout dragon rend, you use your unrelenting force to blast it out of the sky and lands, and then you talk it, to it in dragon tongue and learn that it's under orders of Alduin to kill all weak races. And you say, sorry, but that is not happening. So you start using your strength to rip into the dragon scales and peel them off because you know that they make great armor if you craft them right and you see a guard has has burnt alive and see that the sword is pretty much untouched and you see it's a great sword and you grab the great sword 
and you chuck it like a spear at the dragon and it hits the dragon in the neck. The dragon falls and you run over and pierce the heart with your hand because you've ripped off some scales to have enough space to rip into the dragon. Then you start peeling off the scales and all of a sudden there's this knowledge that you're understanding in the back of your mind and you all of a sudden feel an urge to use the shout you use it and it burns your throat because you're not used to fire i know if anybody here is familiar with skyrim you don't get the fire shout at, at that wall i know but it's it's my what if <laughs> so Use the shout and it burns your throat. And it... The air is sweltering hot. And... Then all of a sudden you hear... A Dova King... From the throat of the world. And you heard it in such a deep, raspy voice. He, you know... It's Alduin saying it. And I'm going to end it here. If you guys like this, please like the video. And I'll continue this next time. So you have the Mace of Malak Bal, the Ring, the Cannibal Ring. I forget the name of the Daedric Lord at this moment. And you have just unlocked the Fire Shout. You know quite a few shouts. You know Whirlwind Sprint. You know... Oh, unrelenting force, the complete words of unrelenting force. And you know, ice breath, pretty much the ice shout. And now you know one word of the fire shout. So I'll, if you guys liked, please like it. If you want to comment, comment what weapons I should put in here from animes or other video games. I'm thinking of putting the chaos blades or the uh, Gauntlets of Hercules from God of War. And if you want me to go on a specific side quest from Skyrim to unlock certain things, tell me in the comments. Uh, da, 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 um, if you want me to do a specific Daedric Lord side quest, tell me in the comments. Uh... I know where I'm going to end this series off, and it's going to be a really weird twist. So. Um, yeah. So, if you guys liked it, please hit the like button. If you guys don't didn't like it, maybe you'll like my other content, which is mainly anime-based. So, if you don't like this one, fairy tale. Just kidding. I may do a what if someone was isekai to fairy tale. Or what if fairy tale. Yeah, I might do that. But, um, if you have any ideas for this series, or if anybody wants to help me find an image that would go good for a snow elf. Or some Daedric Lord images. Please send me the link in the comments. Or join my Discord. And send me the link that way. Or just send me the image that way. Really appreciated. And I'll talk to you guys later.